Welcome back. So, Yemi, you were talking about people going to play at the beach. Yeah, so there was a particular incident where in Lagos here, yeah, where some students, where they were supposed to be in school, they were actually in uniform and they went to play at the beach and a media person saw them and showed them in the news and the governor saw it then and the governor made it an issue. All those students were brought, addressed by him directly. The principal was queried why those students left and that was, that was what copped it then. It wasn't as if every child was going to school after that time, but the body language was very important. You know, every time we talk about body language, we always talk about the body language of the president, which was the body language, because currently I'm not aware of any body or the language. The governors are, are the people that are closer to people when it comes to education. If you check our educational institutional... You, you and governors local government, local government chairman. chairman. Yeah, so the way the educational uh, structure is put together in Nigeria is the fact that the state government owns more schools than local government. Also, the responsibility and the supervision. I mean, I can't share the Nigerian constitution. The local government is supposed to support the educational objectives of the state. So, while the local government have responsibility, but it's still the, gov the state that has the principal responsibility. And you know, education is on the concurrent list. So, it's the governors to take on that responsibility and be determined to show they are serious about this issue about literacy. And like I said, literacy is not just about, it's now an issue for early child. Uh, UNESCO did an assessment of the various levels of education in Nigeria, and the weakest area where they discovered was in early child. Early child is like foundation before. So, you know, they call a, a level of education primary school. Mm -hmm. It's primary because it's supposed to be the primary level of it. But what research has also found is that before that child gets to primary school, he should have acquired some Definitely. basic literacy, some basic skills. So in Nigeria, we are still struggling with that. We're struggling with early child. So um, governors should start to show interest in that and start to reward and also provide sanctions uh, for states, individuals, personalities, parents that refuse to train. And, and like Mr. Kola said, we must start to provide consequence management for parents that refuse to send their children. So for people that employ children when they should be in school. The law already says it's a crime. So we're not looking for a law. We're just saying enforcement. And, and, and just, let's, just, let's just make a case study. Or let's just make a demonstration that this is a crime and people were just. Okay. Today is World Literacy Day. Is there anything in particular that is happening to draw our attention to that? Okay, I think there is well, one or two organizations doing something today about uh, the word literacy. But I think media is helping us. Let me be very sincere. I didn't know they would take this to heart like this. And I must appreciate this show for that which you are doing. And uh, maybe we will only do it once in a year. The general reminder is there that you've done for us. And that parents out there, they can hear us clearly that this is very important that we will change the culture by doing it together. It's not just the role of their teachers. It's not just the role of a few people. It's in all of us. And like we have distributed responsibility to, to government, that yeah, there is a level of enforcement that is permissible in order for us to achieve our literacy goal. Maybe the other culture is that every government should move this issue beyond the political uh, issue. We need to understand that education is not a political issue. Uh, now, let me take this, your submission and put it against those imparting knowledge. That was the first question I asked you. Okay. In the classrooms, there have been reports of teachers who are able to read and write, but cannot speak. And so they impart the wrong kind of skills to the, mm -hmm. to the children. There are also cases of teachers, I mean, we saw that in a dose state where a teacher was, not, was asked to write a test and could not. The test that was given to the children that she was teaching. So at the end of the day, how do we, would the teachers, or how should the teachers help in ensuring that this issue of literacy is followed through and through? I mean, we used to have teacher training colleges. They don't exist anymore. Teachers unions, how effective are they? Who's monitoring the teachers? Who's testing? Who's grading? Who's encouraging? Hmm. Now, this is a off scope. I hope October 6 again, October 5 again, you'll call this World Teachers Day. <laughs> you can do all these gentle reminders for education. But this is my fundamental issue around here for teachers. When people score low in exams, 
and we send them to education department. We have set the pace for the future. Mm. Hmm? So it's because I score 160 something that they say the only department available for me is the education department. On here today, I'm aware that we need to change that culture if we want to improve the quality of teaching. Let's figure out how to get the best to the classroom. That's a secret. While for now, like you said, everybody work hand in hand, like countries have done it before. Countries have sat down to look at, oh, what's the quality of teachers we need? And these are the benchmarks. They need to have passed these exams. When they pass this type of exam, they are more prepared to do the work effectively. That's the hand that we need to work from. The second end is very close to it, is that um, we need to have a professional way that we weed off these type of teachers who cannot read and write. We need to look at them and tell them to find other things to do with their life mm. because you are destroying the future. You are destroying this thing that we are pursuing. So if we have a, if we have a professional way that year tests happen every, every year, teachers go through tests, they are aware of it, mm -hmm. they prepare for it, they try to pass it, and that, that one helps us to have a formal saving process. Like I said, education must not be a political issue. So if you have to go because you are not the type of competent teacher, I haven't created all the platform for you to succeed and develop competences. It's time to find other expression in your life. If you allow me to also uh, support what you just said, uh, one of the things that explains the rapid growth in literacy in, in Great Britain, for example, is the printing of the Bible. Uh, so the Bible was not in the English language. And somebody took it upon himself to translate to English language. And because people saw they wanted to read God's words, I mean, UK is a religious organization at that point, and they could read it in their language, more people started to learn to read and write in English. So the religious system was very powerful in ensuring the growth of literacy in that country. I think it's something we need to also leverage on in Nigeria. So tomorrow, Almost 40 to 50 million Nigerians will gather in various religious institutions. Some 40 to 50 gathered yesterday. The two major religions in Nigeria have holy books. So what that means is that the gods in those religions have a recognition of the importance of reading and writing. So the Bible is to be read, which means you should be literate. The Quran is to be read, which means you should be literate. So I think one of the people we also need to... Um, well, put a request to at the head of religious institutions to emphasize that happening in their churches and in the mosque. So tomorrow, each pastor, I beg of you, when you preach, start by saying literacy is important and try to ask whether the parents are putting investments around it. Um, programs to support that will also be very, very important at the end of the day. Um, teachers that we have, and you know, people have talked a lot about teachers that didn't do well, and all of that, what we should do about it. The question we need to ask ourselves is, we, are, we, should, we should not be surprised at the investment we made. What you sow, you will reap. We have shown that the weakest of us are the ones that study education. Therefore, that is the result we are saying. Let me, uh, let me just pop this in. Clinton Bobby sent in this mail. He says, what exactly qualifies you to be literate? What do we call a person who is literate in a particular aspect and illiterate in the other example? Computer literate, English illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> the computer literate, yeah. Okay, so the basic definition is being able to read and write. I said some people Add have also added. That. So, so for somebody who. Add the bit of um, the context. speaking and listening. Yeah, so speaking and listening. So, what some countries have done is to limit the definition of literacy to what it is at the, at the basic level. So, they are like. Eight dimensions of literacy, financial literacy, uh, sexual literacy, and all of that. So what many countries try to measure is that basic one, because that's the one that could infect everyone. So if, if somebody can't speak good English, uh, but is very good if we're using the computer, or using science, yes, so it's computer literate, which is a dimension of literacy. Digital literacy. Or maybe digital literacy. It's also possible for somebody, and, that, and that, that's another part of this literacy, <laughs> the dimension of it. So you have cases of people, I mean, you had a case of a very popular in Nigeria that mistakenly showed the picture of his bedroom on social media. That's an indication of a, a digital illiterate. When you want to start to do Instagram in a bedroom or in a toilet or in your room with your spouse. So the definition of literacy will start getting expanded, but basically it's about being able to read 
and right. And that's what today is essentially about. So I can do computer, I can act, I can do this, uh, various dimensions of literacy, but not the foundational definition of literacy, which is about you being able to read and write in, in any language. Okay, Mr. Koro, as we wind down, a word of advice to everyone, literate and illiterate alike. Like I've said, it's our business. I think one of the injustices we've done to ourselves every time is to think it's not my business. My own children are going to this school and my house, and my house help does not need to go to that school. And we must begin to change, oh, it's on my street, it's not my business. It's now every stakeholder trying to awaken this, government playing their role, parents playing their role, everyone. But there is this dimension we also must think about. How can we use digital to fast, lack, to fast track literacy? We live in that digital age and we must use it as a tool to also achieve our literacy objective. Mm -hmm. So people might not like to read traditional books, for instance, but this platform helps them to also learn English and learn their language. Okay, like yeah, me, real quick. Yeah, so again, it's also all mobilizing resources to make it happen. So programs on TV, I mean, everybody knows the impact of Sesame Street as a TV program to help children develop literacy skills. So we need to have things like that. So that's an appeal to Nollywood. We should not just be doing those films. We can also start to do educational films that teach children. Um, Bob the Builder is one interesting program to that help students develop technical literacy. That's very, very important. I think the last point I also want to emphasize is on the need for us as a country, as an organization, to start to put demand. As we go towards election, many things are coming up. So there was an argument between some of the candidates last week about restructuring. And it went back and forth, the vice president and one of the president's aspirants for the political parties. They have not had a conversation on educational literacy. Mm. And we need to force them because they will not. We need to demand they must talk to us about their educational goals All right. and objectives. Thank you very much, Yami Fire, Mihi Man Kaptot, Burma, the expert, Biodon Kolaoli, lead consultant, fit to teach. Thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Well Thank done. you. Samurai, we'll be back in a moment. Please don't go away.